When you're training for engine out scenarios, you typically learn that the first thing you do in an engine failure is to pitch for your best glide speed. The Cessna POH lists our best glide speed in the emergency procedure section as 65 knots. So if we bring the power back, we're going to pitch up to decelerate to 65, then let the nose settle down and trim to hold that speed. What best glide speed does for us is allow us to travel the furthest distance over the ground for a given loss of altitude. Again, the POH gives us a chart for how far we can expect to glide without power based on the assumption that we're at the best glide speed of 65 knots. Maximizing our glide is important because it lets us travel to an ideal landing spot without losing too much altitude. It gives us a chance to get to our emergency field before we get too low. Have a look over at the vertical speed indicator. Would you expect that our rated descent is also the slowest it could possibly be? Just because we're gliding the furthest distance at VG doesn't mean we're staying in the air for the longest period of time. Let's slow ourselves down a bit. It turns out that we can have a slower rated descent at a slower airspeed. This speed isn't listed in the POH like VG is, but it's our minimum sink, min sink speed. It maximizes our time in the air as we glide, but doesn't give us our furthest glide distance like VG does. So what's best, VG or min sink? Let's say we lose our engine. The first thing we do as we've been trained is pitch for best glide, 65 knots. This allows us to travel further towards our intended point of emergency landing. We're going to enlist the help of the GPS to find a nearby suitable field. Cumberland Airport is only 6 miles away, which at our altitude is close enough to glide to. It's bearing 040 degrees, so we turn that way. As we glide towards it, we lose a bit of altitude, but once we've arrived, VG has allowed us to maintain as much altitude as possible. Altitude gives us options, but do we stay at VG here? Let's slow it down to min-sync, about 55 knots, while we circle the approach end of runway 5. If you're a commercial student, this may look familiar to you as the steep spiral maneuver. And this is how it's useful in practice, to maximize your time over an intended point of landing as you assess options. You don't need to maximize your glide distance when you're already over your point, but keeping yourself in the air as long as possible can be crucial. As we fly this, we notice the wind is pushing us down the runway from our intended point of landing at the approach end of runway 5. This indicates the winds are favoring the opposite runway, runway 23. So we shift ourselves to that part of the field. Maximizing our time aloft gives us a chance to make these determinations. Now, our goal is to get set up on downwind to beam the numbers for runway 23 at 1000 AGL, which is about 1800 indicated altitude. From here, it just becomes a classic engine out landing where we're judging distance and making turns and configuration changes when needed. So we've combined three concepts and training tasks into one scenario. The pitch for best glide, the steep spiral at min sink, and the engine out landing to highlight how each concept has accomplished a different specific goal. And if goal-oriented scenario-based training is what you crave, check out Flight Insight Ground Schools today at the link here or in the description.